Poland has been uh, conducting its own uh, military modernization and expansion program in recent years. They started buying weapons in quite large quantities That's right. around 2017-18. The first orders uh, came for uh, the Patriot missile defense system, for uh, uh, for um, Abrams tanks uh, later on as well. These these uh, most modern uh, Abrams M1, A2, SEP uh, V3 tanks, as as they are called. Uh, now recently, they also put in an order for. 96 uh, Apache attack helicopters. So the Polish army is gaining uh, a lot of uh, capabilities, uh, especially with these contracts that have been signed uh, after the outbreak of the war with the South Koreans for uh, a, thousand, a thousand tanks, according to a framework agreement, uh, of which 820 will be produced here in Poland, the so-called K2 tank or K2PL in its Polish version once it will be produced in Poland. Uh, also nearly 300 um, K239 Chanmu uh, MLRS systems, uh, self-propelled guns, uh, the so-called K9s, uh, 670 of those. <laughs> so uh, you can see these headlines in, in newspapers across Europe that Poland is becoming uh, the European Union's uh, largest land army by by far, uh, and and this is a process that will take uh, a couple of years. But by the end of this decade, we will have we will be very very far gone down that path, so to say, and it's uh, it it should be completed by the early 2030s. Uh, so. Poland know that they need to buy some time for all, all of these weapons to appear and there is no better way than making sure that uh, the Russians they simply lose that much equipment in the war with Ukraine that they wouldn't be in a position to launch any attack on Poland uh, in in the near future. Uh, so, so this is one of those reasons for why the Poles they simply have a national security interest in making sure that the Russians suffer as uh, many casualties, both in manpower, but also in military equipment. Uh, well, yes, and you mentioned the Second War, and it mm. appears that Russia is now re seeking to re-equip its front line with some very ancient yes. variants of the, of the, of the T-tank. They have been uh, losing uh, that many. Of course, they have some more modern tanks as well, such as the T-90 tanks. That Which has are, been very, um, as far as I'm aware, they've not been very prominent on the battlefield. There, there haven't been that many of them. And uh, surprisingly, they have been performing much worse than uh, initially thought. Uh, however, they are still uh, one class above the T-72 tanks, uh, which is, you could say, the workhorse of, of the Russian army. Uh, then they also have T-64 tanks that are slightly older, uh, but still good enough to, to, to be used in this war. But uh, recently there was some footage of the Russians dusting off some old T-55 tanks that uh, production started in the mid-1950s. So this is definitely a weapon system that has <laughs> seen its best days many decades ago. Uh, and the fact that they are rolling out uh, T-55 tanks show, shows that uh, the Russians have lost uh, such a large quantity of their T-72 tanks that they are now really uh, in trouble. Uh, what has to be said, though, is that the Russians, at least in recent months, uh, they didn't do it immediately. They, they were probably still hoping for uh, a quick win. But once they realized that this is, this is dragging out, uh, they, did, they did start ramping up uh, production to, to wartime levels, uh, introducing uh, three shifts a day uh, in their factories uh, and, and really in increasing production. Naturally, they have problems due to Western sanctions. Uh, there is a lot of uh, components that, that are, are lacking, especially th these more modern uh, pieces of equipment that are needed for uh, communication equipment or uh, optics, for example, um, they are getting uh, some of it through uh, evading sanctions by using third parties to, to import it. Uh, a lot of these components are actually still made in, uh, in, in the European Union and uh, through various ways make their way to Russia. But uh, 
the process has been complicated. So, uh... Adam, as usual, the clock in the corner of the room has defeated us, so I'll have to ask you to pause there, but we'll pick it up next time. There we are, as usual, defeated by time, but fear not if you join us next time, as we hope you will, we'll pick up the story here on Poland Daily History. In the meantime, thank you for watching and see you next time.